Hey, moon lovers, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are talking about the recent news about Japan's lunar landing and the fascinating area where the lander touched down. There's a lot to unpack here, and we're excited to share it with you. Okay, let's get started. Understanding Japan's Lunar Landing Before we get into the details, let's set the stage. Japan's lunar landing has been making headlines, and we're here to uncover the why behind this incredible feat. The moon, our celestial neighbor, has always captivated the imagination of scientists and space enthusiasts alike. But what led Japan to target a specific area on the lunar surface, and what secrets does it hold? Let's find out. The Landing Site The landing site chosen by Japan for its lunar exploration is no random patch of the moon. According to a report from CTV News, the Japanese lander touched down in an area of significant scientific importance. This region, known for its unique geological features, is nestled within the South Pole Aitken Basin, one of the moon's largest and oldest impact craters. Why this specific location, you ask? The South Pole Aitken Basin has long been a tantalizing target for lunar exploration due to its potential to provide insights into the moon's geological history. This region is like a cosmic time capsule, preserving the lunar past and its rocky layers. Scientific Objectives Now, let's delve into the scientific objectives behind Japan's lunar mission. The primary goal is to unearth clues about the moon's formation and evolution. By studying the rocks and materials within the South Pole Aitken Basin, scientists hope to unravel mysteries about the moon's early years and the tumultuous events that shaped its surface. Additionally, this mission aims to shed light on the composition of the moon's subsurface. The moon has long been considered a pristine celestial body, untouched by the processes that shape Earth's geology. Exploring beneath the surface provides an opportunity to better understand the moon's internal structure and composition. Instructions on board To accomplish these scientific goals, Japan's lander is equipped with a suite of cutting-edge instruments. These include cameras, spectrometers, and drills designed to collect samples from the lunar surface. The data gathered will not only contribute to our understanding of the moon but also enhance our knowledge of planetary evolution as a whole. One notable instrument on board is the near-infrared spectrometer, tasked with analyzing the composition of minerals on the moon. This tool is essential for identifying key geological formations and deciphering the moon's geological history. Space Weathering In November, NASA published photographs of Scioli taken by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, a spacecraft currently orbiting the Moon and mapping it to aid future missions. In the black and white photo, the crater looks like a splotch of light. The Moon doesn't have an atmosphere like the Earth, so it isn't protected, and it's constantly bombarded with micrometeorites and radiation that damage the surface layers, said Sarah Russell a professor of planetary sciences and senior research lead at the Planetary Materials Group of London's Natural History Museum. The crater is lighter in color because radiation and micrometeorites haven't had enough time to darken it yet. When a crater happens, it throws up material that was buried and that might be more pristine because it hasn't experienced this damage, which we call space weathering. It gives us a fresh rock to look at and potentially learn more about the moon, she said. Opportunities to study these rare rock samples make the moon a brilliant geology laboratory," Russell added. Whatever the moon has experienced, the Earth has also experienced. Looking at craters can also tell us something about the Earth's own history, because rocks form there without any of the complicating factors that we have on Earth, like water, life, and the wind," she said. It's a beautiful experiment in the sky. Water does come into play when looking at another area of the Moon that will be targeted by upcoming landings, including NASA's first crewed Artemis mission, expected as soon as 2026. The South Polar Region, Asinski said, is an area that is geologically interesting and also rich with what we call volatiles, think water ice but also frozen carbon dioxide or ammonia. If humans can find a good, sizable source of water ice in the Moon's South Pole region and it's possible to extract it, the result could be a game-changer for lunar exploration, according to Asinski. 
we'd have water for the astronauts to drink. We can extract the oxygen, and it can be broken down to get the hydrogen for rocket fuel. It also reduces costs because water is one of the most expensive things to launch from Earth because it's so heavy," he said. If we want to build lunar bases, which we all hope we do, we are going to have to find a source of water to use on the moon. Japan's lunar landing is not merely a touchdown on the moon's surface. It's a scientific expedition into the moon's ancient history. The South Pole Aitken Basin holds the keys to unlocking mysteries about our celestial companion, and the data collected will shape our understanding of the moon's formation and evolution. As we continue to explore the cosmos, each mission adds a chapter to the ongoing story of space exploration. What are your thoughts on Japan's lunar mission and the scientific objectives behind it? Share your excitement and curiosity in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow space enthusiasts, and subscribe for more mind-expanding content. Until next time, keep your eyes on the stars. Catch you in the next video.